Hi, hi, there's Sagittarius. How are you guys doing? I really hope that this video finds you well. Welcome to your 27 June to July 4th reading. Back with me again, Anissa from the Inner Stereo. For those of you who are in my channel, hello. And for those of you who have been here a long time, welcome back. So I'm gonna do things like a little bit differently this time, guys. Um, actually just start doing it on Leo reading. <laughs> So we're going to do a pick a card reading for advice by the end of the reading, all right? So uh, this is going to be a general reading and you could always apply this with anyone in your life. Don't forget to check your sun, moon, rising, or Venus sign. And because this is a general reading, so the reading might get reversed, okay? So let's talk now, Sagittarius. You have the King of Swords there and you have the Knight of Pentacles in reverse and you also have the Ten of Wands in reverse. I feel that the burden of energy that you've been feeling a weeks prior to this is going to be lifting up just a little bit. Um, the heavy weight on your shoulders and all of those stuff are going to be lifted from you. Um, if you have had carried... With that Knight of Pentacles in reverse, you have had carried a very, very strong and wavering devotions and loyalty, that type of energy that when every time you need me, I'm always going to be here, but it's kind of like non-forward moving type of night. That type of energy that you had for somebody, I think it's, it's starting to disappear and you're like the king of swords. You're like, you know what? I'm done living in a state of like this 10 of wands. I'm so ready to just like whew, get it off my shoulder and I'm going to keep my head clear this time. But be careful with the king of swords in here. It does have like a a little bit of a holier than thou type of energy it means that my way is the right way but for you i think this king of swords is such an advantage for you because you get to keep your head very very clear so what is the overall challenge of the relationship there's only one okay so you have the hierophant card in here so with this hierophant card it means that uh, somebody in this relationship has a little bit of a problem of keeping promise, of keeping commitment. It might be a non committal relationship for some of you, but it's just like the agreement, the promises, the commitment is so hard to fulfill for one person. The full card. You took a giant, giant leap of faith for this person in the past, guys. I swear to God. And you forgot who you are. I mean, the star card in the verse. You took a giant leap of faith because you believe in this promise. You believe in the Ten of Pentacles. You believe that, well, maybe this person is going to be the person who I will share, you know, something with, like a family with. I could feel it in my bone. I could feel it in my body that this person is something. And, this per you know, when you jump <laughs> in your feelings for this person, you completely abandon everything. You got the star card in reverse in here. You know, you completely abandon your unique selling proportions. You went all in. But what's funny is that, especially if you guys are dealing with one person, this person was actually behaving more of a Sagittarius than you guys are. You know, you just love how they look. They have this very, very fiery quality and with the Queen of Wands. Well, they're so exciting. They're so like this, like this. You kind of like wanted to take a giant leap of faith about that. You were decided before they even decide. Because, you know, the Knight of Wands in reverse is kind of like a little bit of a flaky type of a knight where... I'm here and then I'm not here type of energy. You know what I mean? Uh, I promise you this. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll show you this. But yeah, maybe it's a bit of an exaggeration. You know, that type of energy. <clears throat> that means five cards in and now. Ooh, Empress. Wonderful. Four of Swords, yeah, see, even up until this point, they're still kind of like a little bit undecided about it. You know, the Empress is receptive. It's different than an Emperor. Emperor wants to conquer. Empress, you give and then you get. Um, I don't know if you're into Netflix, but if you watch, um, it's a horror movie, Apostle in Netflix, you, you, there's this goddess. And for some reason, this goddess kind of like reminds me of Empress card in a way that if you feed it blood, she will give you corpse. She will give you crops. I mean, corpse. She will give you crops. She will give you cattle. She will give you food. She will give you sustenance. She will give you anything that you need. But you have to give first. So this person is like this. Very, very receptive. If you give, then you will receive. Not an emperor type. Not somebody who leads the way. Not somebody who do something. Yeah? And when is this person is your soft spot? 
because you get that five of swords in reverse you know Sagittarius usually are very very blunt they are usually very very like cut to the throat painfully honest type of person but when it comes to this person you're trying as much as you could to avoid any type of conflict with them because the five of swords in reverse I don't want to have any type of conflict with you and it's like you try to go away something always brings me back to you both of you wants to work things out this is the overall energy for both of you yeah not just one person it's the both of you both of you wants to work things out both of you actually still believes in this connection both of you feels that you complete and complement each other but again, because there is such a feminine energy, you have to be the masculine one. I mean, regardless of the gender, yeah? It's just that yin and yang, that what makes it work. Because this person is laying passive. Very passive. You see, with this, this glare is awful. Um, the person is laying passive with that Empress Cardinal, the, so the four of swords there. You're moving in very, very slowly. This person sucks you in really slowly. You try to get away, but like they creep in on you slowly and you can't help think about them. You cannot help to walk through this road again. Or well, because deep down inside you still believe. That means five cards in the future. I still believe. See, Queen of Pentacles, very, very passive. They're showy, you know, with the Queen of Wands. They're showy, but not the most active. Queen of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, they really want something real. Three of Wands in reverse. Wheel of Fortune. <clears throat> Two of Wands, Two of Pentacles, but you ask yourself, are you ready for it? You know, careful what you wish for. Because if you ask me, are they in it? Do they want this? And I say, yeah, they do. But they don't. Pentacles is different, yeah? Because they're all Pentacles in here. Queen of Pentacles and also the King of Pentacles. They don't care about emotional talk. You might feel insecure about something and it's it's bothering you. You can't expect them to say the right thing to make you feel better because that's just not how they are, you know. This is a type of person I think for most of you you're dealing with somebody whose love language is active services through helping you out, through providing, through making plans everything like that you want to talk a lot you have the two wants in here you want to talk a lot you might have like a little bit of information that you acquire about them and you want to talk about it you want to do things very very differently you know with the wheel of fortune it's always very different sometimes you want to have like a great emotional connections with them sometimes you want to have an awesome sex sometimes you want to have like a really great mentally stimulating conversation and then you want to have like this emotional bonding this person is very stuck in a pentacle way okay so what are what is our plan for the future and what is it that we can do in and now to make sure that the future is going to happen we live day by day and we'll see how it progress that is the energy of queen of pentacles so there is a little bit of a problem you might feel a little bit down with and ask yourself do you really want this simply because a little bit of a mismatch of um you know love language here Got the two of pentacles. So it's actually you who is a bit undecided about this. So let's pull advice card. I'm going to pull four cards. I'm going to make sure that you guys can't see it when I'm pulling them out. Can't see it right. Please don't. Whoops, nope, that's because that's gonna be five. Should we do five? Let's just do five because I'm a Sagittarius myself. So, okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five. I'm going to give you 10 seconds of silence so that you could really, really choose. Are you done? Let's go. So for those of you who chose card number one, you actually have the third quarter moon adjustment is required. You see, um, I think we've touched base on this in the beginning that there's like a lot of love language differences in here. You guys are a totally different person than this person. I think you should manage your expectations in a way that you cannot expect them to be who they are not. You know, if you love somebody, you should just love them for who they are. Like maybe they could do something to improve, you know, the mental stimulation, the emotional bonding or something, but you cannot expect them to be somebody who they're not. For the, for those of you who pick card number one, there's actually like a lot of things that you can be grateful for or of about this person because at least they're pentacles. At least they mean it when they said they want you. They really do mean it. You know, but it's just like they're very, very receptive, not the type of person who can invoke like a lot of fun, a lot of butterflies in your stomach type of thing. It might be boring for Sagittarius to go through this period, you know, to go through a relationship that is like this. I understand. I'm a Sagittarius myself. Second, for those of you who chose card number two, you have don't let pride get in your way. Don't let pride get in your way. I think we're talking about the current situations where you feel that you get being sucked in to this person again. Something always keeps pulling you back to this person. Something keeps on doing that. And there is one thing that is blocking, which is your pride. You know, it says your pride is those pride that you have, the ego that you have. Is it doing good for you or is it detrimental for you? You know, what is so hard to just reach out? You know, when you reach out, you don't actually put your ego down the line. At least you get a closure. You know, I understand how Sagittarius' mind works. Um, we get curious about something, and then once we have it, it was like, aha, we got it figured. And it kills us to, 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 to live like maybe a year from now or two years from now and to say to ourselves, like, I should have done this. So instead of, you know, regretting, you know, the things that you're not doing just because of the, your pride that is in the way, try to kind of like lower down your pride just a little bit. You might be surprised about what is it that you could do. <sighs> Third, for those of you who chose card number three, you and your loved ones are safe. This is a very, very good one. You have the um, cancer card in there. This person has a maternal quality in them. Um, sometimes you know especially for Sagittarius when we're dealing with a paternal type of in a relationship I mean when you're dealing with a paternal or maternal um, partner we get like what who do you think you are you're not my mom you're not my father or whatever that is but try to appreciate they they have I think you might be dealing with somebody with a very very great cancer or Capricorn placement because I do feel that Capricorn are also paternal in a way um, this person cares about your safety, this person cares about your security and everything like this. And you could trust this person with all of your life because they will always be there to protect you. Um, not so much in the mental stimulation, not so much on the um, anything aspect, but on that part though, you could trust them on that. Fourth, step out of your comfort zone. This is a very, very new relationship for you guys. I mean, you have the North Node there and there's like a little bit of a balance. I think you have been, um, you have been very, very comfortable in your patterns of relationship way, way back in the past. And this is a very, very new patterns that you find. And sometimes every time we break a new pattern, we try to establish a new pattern. Um, we have the tendencies to be contradictory or to be conflicted about that. This is safe, guys. Seriously, this is safe. And then the fifth one is that you have the expect powerful changes. So if you've been praying to God or if you've been um, expecting things to change between you and them, yes, there is going to be changes. I mean, you have the wheel of fortune in there. You know, um, it's kind of like very, very divinely guided. If you guys have not been talking to one another, I think you might kind of like run into them in the grocery stores and maybe in the gym or whatever that is. But there's going to be a very, very powerful changes in your relationship and just wait for it. You know, you might, you might not see it in the now, but it's probably going to happen like really, really soon. Okay. 
So I think that is it for my reading for you, Sagittarius. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys find tons and tons of clarity that you've been looking for. I really do hope that you have a great week ahead. All right, bye-bye, guys. Have a great day. I love you.